I'd like to welcome everybody to the June meeting of the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Commission. This time we'll call the meeting to order. As always, we'll start with the prayer and pledge, and Ricky Turner has agreed to lead us. Ricky? Thank you, D. Let us pray. Our God and our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day and for all your many blessings. Uh, we come at this time uh, as board members of the uh, Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Commission to d make decisions on to better our city, our community, and all those involved. Uh, we thank you for the leadership here at Murfreesboro and Rutherford County and all the citizens who call this great place their home. We pray for every visitor who comes this way to make Murfreesboro a better place. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Ricky. Everybody should have uh, received their packets earlier in the week. Uh, the minutes for our previous meeting in May were in the packet. At this time, we'll entertain any comments, questions, changes, etc. And if there are none, a motion for approval. I move approval of the minutes. Nice for you. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Minutes are approved. Thanks for those, Mitzi. I have one change to our new business agenda. Um, item four, which was the special use um, guideline that we were going to look at today, we're going to scratch that. Um, that needs a little more attention before it comes before us, so we're going to save that for the next meeting. We'll move now to the first item, which is our proposed budget for fiscal year 2015. I'll turn it over to Lanny. Lanny? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the Commission, um, what I wanted to do today is just give you an overview. It is the uh, time of year that um, we have already submitted our budget to city administration. Um, and Monday night, uh, we presented it to council. Uh, of course, it's gone through all the revisions and so forth that administration before going to council. But I wanted to bring to you what um, what council saw Monday night and what's in the budget, and uh, show you how it's structured. Number one, the first page that you see um, is what we call the department summary, which kind of gives you an overview of what all we do. Uh, in parks and recreation in terms of uh, all of the areas that we take care of. Of course, we take care of about 1,115 acres across the city. We operate five comprehensive recreational and cultural facilities and 23 other park sites uh, throughout the city um, to, uh, to provide our recreation services. You can see from our organizational chart that we are divided into five divisions, recreation, athletics, McKnight, and sports come, Patterson Community Center and maintenance. And most of those superintendents that are over those different divisions are here today uh, if you have a question about what goes on in there. But you can see what falls under each one. Nate Williams is a recreation superintendent. Thomas Laird is the athletic superintendent. Bart Fight uh, is the McKnight Sports Com, and then of course Tom Sage is the uh, Patterson, and then Steve Toombs is our maintenance superintendent. Going on to the next page, implementation of council priorities. The uh, council has set up four distinctive goals and priorities uh, that they want all the city departments to uh, look at. The first one is safe and livable neighborhoods. And you can see the bullets underneath there on how we contribute to safe and livable neighborhoods. Uh, things like providing citizens and residents safe and accessible and affordable facilities for recreation. Um, and it, it goes on. Uh, the second one is strong and sustainable financial and economic health. And of course, we feel like that we really stimulate the economy 
uh, within Murfreesboro. There are several things. Of course, the one thing that's probably talked about the most is the amount of economic uh, uh, impact that we have on tourism from our tournaments, our special events, and other things that we do. Uh, we estimate that that's somewhere around a $28 million impact each year from just what our department does. The other thing that um, some people, um, until we mention it, I really don't think about how we stimulate the local economy, uh, but you start thinking about the 9,000-plus athletes that we have in our, um, in our uh, d programs, and you start thinking about how people move around the community. Uh, anybody that has children that knows that they're going from dance lessons to baseball to football to soccer, uh, very little time to stop and cook dinner. Most of the time you're eating out and so forth. So you have an economic impact there as well. And then you think about all the equipment that has to be bought um, Everything from camping gear to canoes to baseball gloves and bats and shin guards and everything else. So there, there's some uh, stimulus that goes on from a local level just from the programs that we do. And then you look at the excellent service with a focus on customer service. Of course, that is always one of our top priorities in terms of trying to provide excellent customer service to everyone that participates in parks and recreation across the board. And then also remember from our annual report that we partnered with 145 different organizations across the city to provide additional recreation, which provided tens of thousands of additional people into our program. And uh, that is that last bullet where it says utilize friends uh, groups, civic groups, students, partnerships, and volunteers to enhance our program delivery. And then engaging our community, uh, and that's one of the things that I know this commission has advocated in terms of trying to keep um, our community engaged in our programs, uh, listening to the voice of folks that are out there and the things that they want to do, and I know each and every one of you bring that back to this commission uh, and express that uh, in different meetings, and uh, that is where we want to be, too. We want to focus and center our program so that uh, we are meeting the needs of our citizens with parks and recreation and leisure services. If you go to the next page, you can see the FY 2014 accomplishments. Uh, one of the things that we're very proud of, we started the youth development uh, program. Mr. Ralph Bunkingham, I think, came last uh, commission meeting and talked about that program and how successful and the children that are involved and uh, how uh, we are looking at uh, uh, continuing to develop that program in the future. Uh, and expanding out to different sites. Of course, we just finished the 8th Annual TWSAA Spring Fling, uh, and Spring Fling will be with us until 2017 and hopefully beyond. Uh, I mentioned a while ago uh, the other tournaments that we've done. We've had over 60 tournaments. Uh, last year we had the Tennessee Cup, which is a premier uh, Tennessee uh, event, 236 teams, and we hosted the BPA World Series, 128 teams. And of course, uh, Chattanooga has been the host of the TWSAA Girls State Soccer Championships. We've always hosted the boys, uh, but we've picked that up and we host that for the first time this year, and we have that for the next few years as well. Of course, Patterson, uh, y'all were involved in the 10th anniversary of Patterson. Uh, you can look at the numbers that we've had here. I know Becky did a good job last time reporting those. Uh, the things that uh, we've done in renovations, uh, you know, we're, we've renovated um, Barfield Crescent Park. I made uh, renovations at McKnight, Starplex. We're just completing the renovations over at McFadden. Uh, we've uh, uh, we've started on a master plan and still working on the one for Cannonsburg. 
Uh, we've completed the McKnight. We've brought that to you for approval, and uh, we're working on a, a master plan for Old Fort Park. Uh, and, of course, the wetlands project that we've been involved with for the last 12 years with the Corps of Engineers, we've concluded with Phase 3 at Oakland. And, of course, if you remember, that included Murphy Spring, where Discovery Center is, all the improvements except for the building itself was a part of that wetland restoration. And then the Black Fox and Nickajack Trace was improved as well. And, uh, of course, um, uh, uh, you were a part of us bringing back the 21 awards that we won from the Tennessee Recreation Parks Association. And if you recall, one of the awards that we were very proud of was the Fellow Award that was awarded to Mr. Dennis Rainier posthumously um, for his uh, contributions to uh, recreation statewide. We have set our goals up for 2015. You can see that we will be working with Middle Tennessee State University to hopefully build an indoor tennis facility at Old Fort Park. Uh, we're going to be looking at implementing a new volunteer program. We'll be bringing that back to you with more details. Um, the uh, Greenway will be uh, adding to the Greenway this year. Hopefully within the next month or two we'll have a bid out to do Phase 4A and hopefully by the end of the year Phase 4B. We're back into discussions with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers on the North Murfreesboro Greenway and more to come on that as well. Uh, and then there's other uh, renovations that uh, will be coming up. One of the significant ones will be SportsCon. And so we'll be bringing that one to you here uh, not too long. We met with the architectural engineering firms, uh, our firm the other day, and uh, we're trying to finalize some planning so that we can bring that to you and show you what we're looking at uh, within, that, um, within that facility. Uh, one of the things that we have pushed for for, I guess, four or five years now is trying to get the ability to have credit card payments um, in our department. Right now we just take cash and check, and uh, we have people come in, and uh, staff spends 10 or 15 minutes explaining passes that we have, and they'll say, I'll take one of those, and they'll put their credit card down, and then we have to tell them we can't take that. And so. We lose, I think, a lot of business by not being able to do that, but uh, we're, we're very, very close uh, on that respect. And then the other thing I think is exciting is the fact that, uh, if you recall, we took proposals for land for the West Park. Uh, we got in 19 proposals. We've evaluated those. We have not engaged the landowners at this point uh, with the... Um, uh, with further talks, but we're going to do that right after this budget is concluded, my understanding. And um, hopefully we'll be getting some land for the West Park and taking that forward. The next, um, the next page is an expenditure summary. It just shows you from a personnel cost, an operating cost, and a capital cost where the money goes in parks and recreation. And then if you go to the next page, this is the breakdown for the FY 2014-2015 budget. The first thing that's listed is revenues. And you can see uh, there, one thing I always like to point out in this is um, for accounting purposes, one of the things that Ms. Wright does is she puts in the amount of money that we get from, from our federal appropriation for uh, the Greenway into the budget, because there has to be a way of accounting for that. And last year we had put in 3,074,000. This year we put in 1,638,000. You can see there's a difference there. But that's what I call pass-through money. Because it's shown in the it's shown in the revenues, it's also shown in the expenditures, so that's a wash. 
So you would take that out if you wanted to have a true figure of revenues there. The budget is broken down into uh, these different categories of personnel cost and all of the cost of personnel including all of the benefits uh, is in there. We are asking for four full-time uh, more employees for the indoor tennis facility. Uh, that cost is shown in there plus the additional uh, part-time. We ask for eight additional part-time. Uh, and we put six months of operating uh, cost into the budget for the uh, indoor tennis facility. The uh, operation and maintenance, uh, in one of those categories, in grounds and lawns, there's, uh, you can see where there's $35,240. Uh, what that is, is uh, there's money in there to redo the seal courts, um, and um, there's money in there to redo the play surface at the General Bragg Headquarter Playground. So those, that's, that's where that additional fund comes from. In pools under operation, there's $38,456 uh, additional in there. That's for the renovation of the water slide at Patterson. So that's, that's where that is. Pretty much all the other additions in there, we left the budget pretty flat this year um, just because we knew that we were going to pick up the operations of the, uh, of the indoor tennis. So um, most of those are either cut back or left pretty flat um, so that we can accommodate that. And then you can get to our utilities. You can see our utilities cost uh, tops a little over a million dollars a year, with electricity being the highest in that category. And then, of course, our travel and subsistency, our recreational activities, and our miscellaneous expense. And then the next page is the addition of fixed assets. And what we do is that's broken out into two different categories. One is normal replacement and one is new equipment. And in the new equipment is the startup equipment for the new indoor tennis facility as well. So uh, that is reflected as well as you can see at the bottom of page 166. The, um, in, it says tennis construction reimbursement there's a million eight hundred seventy thousand dollars shown in there. Uh, that's the five hundred thousand we got from Christy Houston and a million three hundred seventy thousand from MTSU, which again is a pass through, but it has to be shown in the budget in terms of uh, accounting. So if you took those two last figures off from the figure at the bottom, that would reflect the total parks and recreation budget. And with that, I'd stand to answer any questions that you may have uh, regarding the parks budget or what is in the parks budget. Thanks, Lanny. But just remember, this is our operating budget. Questions? Yeah, I do. I, okay. We've been talking about lighting for the outdoor courts of tennis for a number of years. We talked about it. I think the board approved it at a meeting here that to try to include that uh, two years ago or maybe in 2013. I don't see that in here either. Is that? That wouldn't be an item that would go into the operating budget. That would be a capital budget. And capital budgets are considered separately. So why, tell me, explain why capital, if it's a capital expenditure, why wouldn't the tennis, the indoor facility be a capital expenditure? It seems like, it seems like that's all capital assets. In the operating budget, generally speaking, things that go into the operating budget are things that are expended within that particular year. In the capital budget, generally speaking, what we do is we look at things that have a life of 15 years or more, and that goes into the capital budget. Um, 
capital budgets, uh, more brick and mortar type projects. Um, the operating budget is things that it takes to operate the facilities through the year, uh, and it may be some of the equipment that's needed for that as well. But as far as capital, capital would be lights at tennis courts. It would be building outdoor facilities. It would be building indoor facilities. Um, it's building roads, bridges. All that goes into capital budget. So you just put the facility construction item for the indoor facility, which that million eight hundred seventy thousand was the pass through dollars. Yeah, that you had to, there has to there even has though those are actually for capital improvements, they were passed through dollars that were donated by Christie Houston Foundation and donated, I guess, via the MTSU uh, Foundation. Is that correct? Yes, and and that is the purpose of accounting. Those used to not go into my budget, Mr. Tips. They used to show up in another budget, mm -hmm. um, but they started dividing. <clears throat> excuse me, things out into the into the departments they're they're pertinent to mm -hmm. instead of having them under all under general administration. And so that's why they show up. That's why I said it, it really kind of gives my budget some inconsistency from year to year. But I always make that point that look at those two, take those two off and then you really kind of see the true operating budget because from an accounting standpoint, those are just put in there for that account. Same purpose. with the pass-through dollars from the Greenway. Same for the pass-through dollars for the Greenway. But, and I think we did talk about the lighting. <clears throat> if it wasn't at the last meeting, Tim, I think we, we talked discussed about it, it at, the, times, yeah. at the previous meeting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. very recently. And, Lanny, I think you confirmed whether it was the last meeting or meeting before that is under consideration in the next capital budget. Yes, it correct? would be an item in the next yeah. capital. Uh, yeah. Okay. I guess my timing is and off. The, and the timing. You know, when we when we voted on it, and again, I think when we voted as a commission that we wanted to include lighting uh, for the outdoor courts, it was I think in the spring of 2013, and it was just and and you'd said we'll get it in the next budget. Capital. So, I, and and I thought that's what we voted, and I guess uh, my question uh, maybe I'm not getting it. You know, I'm not the sharpest doing shit, but I'm not seeing where, when well, that's going to happen this, and which budget that's going to happen in. And I, I thought I, it should have been in this this one here. If I understand the way that it's, it's flowing, the next budget, based on when we voted on that, the next capital budget would be this one that they're under consideration now. It I mean, would. That's correct? The, the capital budget works totally different than the operating okay. budget. Now, for the city's total operating budget, what they have is they have debt service, and that's where they pay the indebtedness for the capital budget, mm -hmm. kind of like people would pay a house payment or a car payment, so to speak. <laughs> and Mr. Smotherman's smiling because he knows that he, he'd he like to get that indebtedness down a little. <laughs> but um, that, that's where that shows up in the overall city budget. Now, from a parks and recreation standpoint or any other city department, uh, we had, we got money in 2008, we got money in 2010, we got money in 2012. And generally speaking, they'll, they may not skip those years, but what they do during those particular years, just like the last one that Mr. Smother would vote on would be 2014, was things that department heads didn't request. It was things that city council had already made obligations to, and those funds were allocated for those obligations. Now, the next capital budget, uh, I'm thinking maybe FY 2015, and usually that's later, comes November, October, November, something like that. But that's where they request from department heads, where, what are you looking for for capital, submit your capital budgets, etc. What I had listed in my 
five-year capital plan for 2013 still hasn't been under consideration. So I'll have to take most of those and move it to 2015. And then we'll go back to council and council will look at the capital budget from a total perspective. Uh, and, and they'll look at it from what is going to be the overall indebtedness and what is the number one, number two, number three, et cetera, projects that they want to fund for the betterment of the city. The other thing they will look at is the overall city indebtedness, and, the, and they'll get to a cap, so to speak, that they can get to that keeps them within their bond rate. And mm -hmm. I'm probably telling you more than... Yeah, I got that part. Okay. Yeah, but and, you, and, you understand and, that part. And Mr. Crumley did an excellent job <laughs> explaining that. Yeah. Uh, as far as the debt service and all, he did a really fine yeah. job so that's, several that's months back. Of, I get that part. I'm just trying to figure out so the know, next, when, when, you know, people next, ask me, you know, what are y'all going to do about that? And yeah, the next, when are you going to do something about that? And the, I'm like, well, <laughs> we've been talking about that for a long time. We just hadn't got there yet. And yeah. I'm wondering yeah, when, that, when that's going to happen. I haven't had to submit that request yet. Got it. To that point. That's the only question And, and to your point, Lanny, I, I think uh, roads are a good example. We'll start talking about a road, and it'll be 15 years before we'll ever see anything happen that designates a road actually being constructed. And, uh, and certainly it does come down to the amount of money that's available and the amount of dollars that are being uh, coming forward. But uh, so, so basically we're operating within the budget, and when the department heads give us a list, it's really a wish list of things that they would like to have. And, and of course, we as a, a body here determine kind of what that wish list is. And so um, I think that, you know, certainly We'd all love to have had those lights up probably a year or two ago, and maybe maybe even before that. But uh, the uh, but but the money just hadn't been there yet, and until the money arrives, and um, of course it's taxpayers' money. So uh, we try to be as prudent as we possibly can with it. But uh, the uh, you know the tennis facility as a whole is probably running a little bit behind schedule. Uh, but uh, it's because we're trying to do what's absolutely best and, and with the amount of allocated funds that we have and uh, it's it's certainly being delayed right now but uh, we'll get it done and and we're we're, we're chugging ahead but uh, the um, I, I guess our, our goal is to provide as much as we possibly can with the limited funds that we have so well one other to Tim's point it, it would be helpful Lanny the um, when we do get calls, you know, nobody I think expects us to know the exact time, but if we could have some idea on the time frame on some of these projects when you get, so I mean, you know, for the lighting of the tennis courts, since we're talking about that, I mean, you know, if, if that's something we think, yeah, we're going to, we think that'll be in the capital budget for 2015 and we think we actually will accomplish the project in 2015 or it will be that following year, that would at least when somebody calls, give us the ability to say, here's the time, the window where we think sure. that's going to happen. And, and really, with getting the uh, indoor facility online, you know, I do think having that lighted and would really complete that project and make it something pretty special. Sure. Yeah, because keep in mind, you know, it's going to be a great facility, indoor facility, eight courts. But... It's eight courts, and it's indoors, and there's going to be a lot of already dedicated use to it when you have a tremendous number of people with leagues, with, you know, with what the MTA does, with the partnerships with the county schools for their middle school programs and their, you know, their high school programs, all lacking facilities, and they're using these facilities, and late fall and early spring, there's not enough lighting on enough courts yeah. to, to, to satisfy the demand. And, you know, he, Lanny's done an excellent job of uh, showing us from a from an overall parks and rec uh, capacity where we fall, fall, you know, very short of having enough baseball fields, softball fields to satisfy the population. Same thing with the tennis. We're, we're woefully short on all those. I get it. You know, we got a limited amount of dollars. A lot of people understand that. I'm, you know, 
I, I want to make make sure of that too. But you know, again, it's there. There's a big need there. We want to obviously we're planning on that being a first class facility. And to Dee's point, you know, putting that, putting those other improvements that had long overdue. Well, the, over the lighting there. the lighting was um, the kind of the second phase of that project. I mean, you know, that was. I'm sure it was. If I remember right, when we looked was, at the whole project, that was part of the value engineering. Well, we we lost. We you know we, you know, from my understanding, you know, uh, the county had X number of dollars, mm -hmm. and we in in the city, as many times as we do, picked up, you know, and carried the ball, and and there just wasn't enough money to light all of those new courts, those, those what, were, what were new courts are now, That's, what, 10, how old, how old are they now, 10 years? The uh, new courts? Yeah. Um, four? Is it? Oh, they're older. They're, five, five years. Okay. Yeah. But you're right. Time flies when you have But it was, it, it, and Mr. Jernigan's right, um, it was a part of value engineering. <clears throat> and uh, because we had provided an estimate, um, and the money was allocated prior to doing the engineering, and then once the engineering was done and the and the estimates for the engineering, we knew that we were short money. Uh, actually, we were short the amount that we had estimated from our side. Uh, so. It, we had to make some choices. One of the choices was to light eight courts and not light the other eight courts. We went ahead and put the conduit in so that it would make it a little easier. We wouldn't have to dig as much when we put the additional lighting in, but you still have to set the post and buy the lighting and, and uh, put all of the wiring and everything in that goes with it. So um, I haven't looked at the cost. Back then it was around $350,000. But we're five years later. We may be looking at half a million dollars now for eight courts. But we can look at that. Matter of fact, that'll be what we generally do is we'll go out and we'll reprice that as we go into getting that capital next capital request uh, put together for city council's consideration. I guess I would have thought you'd have done that back in 2003 when we made that recommendation. We did go back and look at that. Okay. Yeah, but prices change. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a good question. Other questions? Any other questions regarding the budget? Does good that work. help understand where we are? Thank you. Okay. Appreciate the update. You're very welcome. Item number two is a consideration for approval of uh, the Best Foot Forward program. Angela is going to tell us all about it. Thank you. Um, we are looking to join in partnership with Murfreesboro City Schools to offer um, this program. Kim Franks with Murfreesboro City Schools and Rachel Singer with uh, Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department have been working very hard on that. Um, neither one of them were able to be here today, but I want to, um, to explain the program and ask for your approval. Um, BEST is a city school program. It stands for Behavioral, Emotional, and Social Teaching. Um, it is designed for students whose behavior significantly limits their successful inclusion into the general educational setting. Uh, the BEST program provides behavioral and social and emotional teaching along with academic instruction to students. That is an existing program with Murfreesboro City Schools. What we've been um, working on doing is providing an extension of that, calling it BEST Foot Forward, and offered the opportunity, um, a collaborative effort, to extend the learning outside of the classroom, um, to come to the parks and recreation facilities and, um, and bring the students to learn more in the parks. Um, what that will look like, we'll have representatives from city schools and parks and recreation department working together to plan and implement um, for regular access to parks and recreation um, opportunities. City schools will uh, coordinate, they'll staff the outing, they'll provide the transportation and the behavioral support. Parks and Recreation Department will provide a staff member to coordinate the program, um, provide access to our facilities and uh, materials to complete the activities. The activities that we're looking at doing uh, are things like nature programs, um, physical well-being programs, service learning, cooperative learning, 
exploration, team building, and experiential learning. Um, this partnership will provide positive experiences, attention, and exposures to activities and settings to which students may not have access to. Um, it's a rewards-based program, something that the students will be working to earn um, in the classroom to be able to come out to the park. Uh, something that we're really excited about, a really good opportunity um, for the children that are participating in this program. Uh, Dr. Gilbert couldn't be here today, but she um, gave me something to share on her behalf. Uh, she said, in my opinion, this is a program design that can help become a model for other school districts across the nation. The partnership that exists between Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department and Murfreesboro City Schools allows for a comprehensive approach to meeting the needs of the whole child. And in doing so, the future of the entire community is changed as boys and girls in the program today are provided with opportunities to become productive citizens tomorrow. Uh, so that's something that we're, we're really excited to work on, and I'd welcome any questions or, or comments. Thanks, Angela. Anybody have any questions regarding this program for Angela? If there are no questions, we need a motion for approval as presented. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. I'll second it. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Angela. Thank you. Well, I think you're still up. I am. Item three is yours as well. We're, uh, we're going to look at the bid for the Westview Mini Park renovation. Yes. Um, two or three meetings ago, we explained the design that we were looking for. Um, we did put that um, project um, to bid earlier this spring. Um, the first um, round of bids were not accepted, um, and we had to reissue on April 21st. Uh, and we opened uh, recently on May 15th. One bid was received. It's from first place finish um, for a lump sum base bid of one. $134,941 um, and an ad alternate of $2,304. Um, if you'll remember, Westview Mini Park is um, it's on February and Smith Streets. It is a small pocket park. It's about 1.4 acres. Uh, and the renovation is a small playground, has some play, no um, little play nodules, um, a little path that goes around the park, some landscaping, and some other general improvements. Um, so we are some, this is something we're really looking forward to accomplishing at this park. Uh, this project is, um, we received a grant through the Tennessee um, Department of Environment and Conservation some time ago. It's a local parks and recreation fund grant in the amount of $75,000. Um, the city obligated to a resolution to commit matching funds um, for another $75,000. So we have $150,000 budgeting budgeted for the project. Um, after deducting the A&E fees, um, which were $9,850, um, the project will remain in budget to proceed <coughs> with this bidding. Uh, it was reviewed by Lowe's and Associates um, and recommend approval um, for a total bid amount of $137,245. And that's my recommended recommendation today. Thanks, Angela. Thank you. Anybody have any questions regarding this bid? Angela, is what we're looking at here, is this kind of a smaller version or a mini version of Kids Castle? Um, it is much smaller <laughs> than, than Kids Castle, yes. Uh, the playground itself is um, a smaller portion of this, um, uh, of the total project. It will be um, similar in size to the playground, say, behind McFadden Community Center, if you're familiar with that, something along that same um, uh, General size. Bragg. Uh, General Bragg Trailhead, um, something along those, na along that, those lines. The little nodular areas are a couple of other small, actually three other small structures, um, climbing, a, a, a climbing feature, a um, set of swings, uh, and there's also a couple of adult bench areas. Um, the landscaping, the regrading, um, the overall improvements on that area is also a significant part of, of the project. If, if it's approved, how long will it take for them to complete that project? We hope to be done um, this summer, early fall. It should be a, a pretty, I don't want to use the word simple because that might, um, <laughs> that might bring bad, bad, bad results. But um, we, we expect it to be completed quickly, yes. Good, Good questions. Any others? Are more, any more questions or discussions? We need a motion for approval if the bid is presented. I move approval, please. Thanks, Gloria. I'll second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Bid's approved. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. Becky, you're up. 
Tell us what's going on. Hey, everyone. We have one of our uh, most popular summer programs is Movies Under the Stars, and that is resuming this week. It started Monday night, and um, each week we show a movie, and every week the movie changes. But during the week, the same movie is shown at five different locations. So Mondays, it's Case and Lane Trailhead. Tuesdays, Cannonsburg Village. Thursdays, Siegel Neighborhood Park. Fridays at Mitchell Nielsen Primary. And Saturdays, Hobgood Elementary School. And the movie started at 8, 8.30 p.m. And there's concessions available. The movie is free. So um, we encourage people to come out this summer to Movies Under the Stars. And if they'd like a listing of the movies, they can like us on Facebook, Murfreesboro Parks and Rec on Facebook. We have the movies listed or they can call our office um, at 890-5333 for the movie listing as well. Whoops. Question, Becky, what did you say Monday night? Oh, sorry, Monday night is at Case and Lane Trailhead. All right, then the next event we have coming up is Family Night Out, and that is next Tuesday, June 10th at Cannonsburg Village for all ages. This program is also free. They'll have a variety of activities and programs going out for going on for families from 6 to 8. And then you can just stay there for the movie that will be shown at 8.30. So you can make quite an evening for your entire family next Tuesday. Then we have the Small Fry Try, which is a triathlon for preschoolers, ages 2 to 6. And that is Saturday, June 14th. And it's from 10 to 11 a.m. at Old Fort Park. Um, registration is going on now or you can register the day of the event at 9.30. And really what the kids do is they run a short distance, hop on their bicycles, tricycles, whatever, and then they run through sprinklers as part of the uh, swimming portion. And then they uh, run through a ribbon and get a trophy at the end. We also have going on our third Friday night concert series at Cannonsburg. And you can see we have them listed um, every Friday through October. So the third Friday of each month, there's a concert at Cannonsburg, which is free, and it's for everyone, and it's from 7 to 9 p.m. Then we have Splash Out. This is um, in partnership with Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department. We host them at uh, one of our park's parking lots, and the fire department comes out. They bring the fire hoses, and they spray water up in the air, and kids get to run around and enjoy the water. And that is June 19th at Siegel Neighborhood Park. That's a Thursday. Then also July 10th at Barfield Crescent Park. And July 24th at Old Fort Park Pavilion 1. And it is from 1.30 to 3. Also coming up, we have Boat Day. This has become quite popular. We've been offering it for several years now. I have no idea quite how long. But uh, that is Saturday, June 28th from 9 a.m. till noon. This is also free, and it's at the Manson Pike Trailhead. And people can just come at any time between 9 and noon and try out a variety of watercraft to decide if they want a kayak or a canoe, a two-person kayak. Um, it's a great way to experience the water in a safe environment. Um, flotation devices are provided for people when they try out the boats and whatnot. And once again, that's 9 to noon on Saturday, June 28th at Manson Pike Trailhead. Then coming up, which somebody reminded me today, is one month from today, on July 4th, we have our celebration under the stars and our Rock the Pool party. Um, the Rock the Pool party starts at 10 a.m. and goes to 4.30 p.m. at the Borough Beach, which is Sportscom Outdoor Pool. And then starting at 5 o'clock at McKnight Park are family games and activities. And then at 8 o'clock, we have... Um, the Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department comes out and has their honor guard that presents the colors, then the Murfreesboro Symphony Orchestra plays, and at 9 o'clock we have the fireworks. So we encourage everyone to come out and just spend the day at McKnight Park swimming, doing activities, and enjoying the fireworks in a safe environment. And this also is a free event. Um, one thing to um, make everyone aware of is July is National Park and Recreation Month. So we will have a variety of activities that month going on in celebration of Park and Rec Month, and we just really want to encourage people to get outdoors. Um, we will have a flick and float where we will show a movie at Borough Beach on Wednesday, July 9th, 
And then we will also have a fun run on Friday, July 25th at Gateway Island. And then at other of our events, such as Movies Under the Stars and Splash Outs and a variety, um, we'll do some contests and give away some giveaways to just kind of promote getting outside and enjoying the outdoors. And I do need to mention quickly that um, we have a few camps with space available. Most of our summer camps have maxed out this summer. But if you are interested, we still have Guard Start Camp. There's two weeks. There's one that starts next week, June 9th, and another one on July 14th. We have Cheer Camp, which is the week of July 21st, and Heritage Camp, the week of July 28th. So we encourage you, if you're still looking for something for your children to do this summer, to uh, sign up for one of our camps. And that's Thanks, it. Becky. Thank you. Good stuff. Anybody have any questions for Becky? As always, thank you. Thank you. We move now to other business. Does anybody have any other business to come before the commission? Thomas, I have. I hate to put you on the spot, but I have one question. Give us an update on uh, where we are with the grass on uh, our soccer <coughs> complex at Richard Siegel Park. Well, as you know, uh, we got through spring fling, and uh, while visually the fields weren't up to our normal standards, uh, guys did a great job. I've got to give it Shane Whitworth and his crew, uh, Danny Pagan, Sandy, uh, Tony Santos, and Roger Myers. Uh, they worked extremely hard to make the best playing surface possible. And uh, honestly, we had several coaches that complimented us on how level and how smooth the playing surface was. Played a lot faster, so it was a little bit more uh, speed involved, and it, it set the tone for a good state tournament. It was something that they hadn't experienced all season long, so it made it kind of unique. Uh, in our stadium field, we actually went in and painted uh, that green so and by the time we played our championship games on it it really looked nice and played really well so I, I can't say enough about our maintenance crew and how hard they work to get those fields in shape uh, we hosted the state cup in uh, this past weekend uh, which was 84 teams throughout the state playing for uh, state championships uh, which utilized all 15 fields now they have completed yesterday morning uh, Shane and his crew immediately started doing a core airification. Uh, they I went I was out there this morning, and they have completed uh, pulling cores on five of the or uh, six of the 15 fields, and they're going to continue through the week. Uh, we've already started getting quotes on sprigs, uh, and one unique is Southeastern Turf uh, and several other companies, but they have a new. Uh, process that we're investigating that puts sprigs in at two inch centers versus a six inch center which is standard uh, which improves the grow time and uh, the speed in which the sprigs would grow in but we're going to do a uh, measurements next week and get a very accurate idea of how many sprigs we will have to have uh, the uh, goal is to sprig on june 15th uh, we'll close all the fields down so from June 15th to August 15th, the soccer park will be closed. Two months should be ample time to get those sprigs grown in uh, and, and get them in the condition to be able to play on. Uh, it's recommended three weeks, so we feel like having eight weeks of rest and, and it will be ample time to grow the sprigs in and, and then at least give them some time to mature uh, before we put a lot of play on it. We also have gone in and re-looked at our usage policy for Siegel Park. Uh, of course, we never could have anticipated uh, the effects of this winter, uh, but we're going to go forward with the anticipation that we're going to always have this type of winter. So we're adjusting play time, uh, practice time. Lanny and I have been investigating alternate practice locations to reduce the amount of practice. Uh, we've adjusted the use agreement schedules and that some of the things are also looking at, but uh, we won't allow them to play through the winter months while it is extremely cold. Uh, and we've designated uh, fields one through five as 11 v 11 fields where there will be no small sided games on that. Uh, that should always give us those five fields plus the stadium uh, to have for a caliber of tournament like the state tournament. Uh, and then our goal would be uh, eventually to have enough park space or enough green space throughout the park system uh, 
uh, that we would never practice on those fields at, at Siegel Park and we'd be able to play games only. Uh, we're not there yet, but we're certainly looking at some alternatives so we can get there. Uh, we thought half the park would definitely help. Um, we're also reducing play time and amount of usage, uh, the amount of home games that teams are allowed, uh, different things like that. So we're doing a complete inventory of, of what we've been doing, and we're going to plan for a hard winter every year. Okay, great. Thank you, Thomas. Anybody got any questions for Thomas on that? I don't have anything for Thomas, but I, I want to make another comment. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, to thank Mr. Bill Allen, our commissioner over here, for his, uh, I don't know if y'all saw his article in the newspaper about his service in World War II, and uh, congratulate him on, on that nice article about him and, and his uh, fellow uh, soldiers in there with him. So Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. thank you. A celebrity in our midst. Absolutely. <laughs> it was awesome. Really good. Thank you very much. Tim, did you have something you wanted to add? No. I, no, that's fine. I, but I echo Eddie's remark. Well, Thomas, I want to, you know, as it relates to Spring Fleen and the state tournament, the, you know, please share and pass along our thanks to the maintenance guys because they made the absolute very best out of a very difficult, challenging situation. And I had uh, lots of feedback and comments from folks that attended Spring Fling and talked about um, how impressed they were with everything and the way it was handled. So thank them for us. They did a great job. Thomas, also to be successful growing grass, I've found that you got to have really good rainfall. And if Becky will schedule a couple more fireworks displays between now and that time, that, uh, I'll assure you we'll get some rain. Uh, go ahead and schedule one. We need one now, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any other business? Good point. Being done, we stand adjourned. Thank you.